Do you really want to do you really want to know what I thought of Peacemaker? Well, you're in luck cuz I'm about to tell you right now. Hello everybody and welcome to my review of season one of Peacemaker, which just concluded a couple days ago on HBO Max. I'll be giving my overall thoughts about the season, so if you don't know anything about the show at all and you want to go in completely blind, then I would consider watching it before you watch the rest of this review. I wasn't really sure about the concept of a Peacemaker show following The Suicide Squad, which is a movie that I actually quite enjoyed, mainly because I didn't really like the character coming out of the movie, and I I don't mean John Cena. I think that John Cena was great in the movie. I just mean based on what happens in the Suicide Squad and where we left him, I didn't really see what about that character would make an entertaining TV show. So I wasn't overly enthusiastic about watching Peacemaker. I actually didn't even start watching it until four or five episodes had already aired because I I just didn't have that excitement for the show, but I, I kept hearing good things and I definitely had planned on watching it. It's just not something that I cleared off my schedule for. And I was actually glad I did that mainly because I was able to watch the whole show in a couple of weeks instead of having to wait eight weeks to watch the whole thing. I actually ended up enjoying Peacemaker quite a bit. I think it's one of the better superhero TV shows and it's actually a really good example from James Gunn about how to take an unlikable character and then use long form storytelling, the episodic format to let us see that character in a new light, to take a journey that we couldn't take in the movies. Flag is right. Peacemaker. (laughs) I think maybe the thing that I like the most about Peacemaker is that it's one of the only superhero shows that is ready to realistically tackle how psychologically damaged you have to be to be a superhero. I know that Robert Pattinson recently, I think, caused a stir among some people when he talked about Batman being a freak. He is a freak. Batman is absolutely a freak. He's a dude who dresses up as a bat and goes out and punches people. He's dealing with his trauma in the absolute most self-destructive worst way possible. Yes, he's doing it for good good reasons, but at the same time, the guy is a total nutball. Peacemaker is actually not that different from Batman. He's able to justify having this whole code in the same way that Batman is. I don't think I can kill someone with something that doesn't have the double piece on it. The difference being he actually does kill people, and so we view him differently. What I like about the show is it's not inherently on Peacemaker's side. Because all the other shows like Daredevil and Batman that have taken on the psychological trauma of the superhero are still on the superhero's side when it comes down to it. This is really more of a third-party view of all of these different characters that allows us to see how ridiculous they all are, and in many ways how wrong they all are, even if they think they're doing things for the right reason reason. So I love the point of view that James Gunn brought to this because it allowed me as somebody who, again, didn't really care for anything that Peacemaker did in the Suicide Squad to say, oh, this show's not trying to convince me why he's a great guy. This show is proving to me why he's absolutely out of his mind. Why are you my least favorite kid in this class? Because I can see right through you. And I think you're a loser. I think the success in sort of changing this perspective around the character obviously starts with James Gunn. He wrote all eight episodes. He directed five of them. But a lot of the credit also has to go to John Cena. James Gunn has been very open about how much of the character's progress came from John Cena's input on where Peacemaker should go. It would be easy to do the sort of all bravado version of this character. And we see that side of Peacemaker. Eat peace, motherfucker. But the great thing about this is that's the exterior that he shows to everyone. This show takes time to show us the interior of Peacemaker. And that's another reason why I like that they chose this story for the long form episodic format, because we have time to spend these moments alone with the character and see just how much of a mess he is when nobody else is around. A movie would not have taken three to five minutes and just had a scene where your main character sits down at a piano and plays a hair metal hit from 20 plus years ago. And yet it is one of the best scenes in this entire show because it allows Peacemaker to drop this facade and actually show us how damaged and sad and vulnerable he is. 
John Cena's performance is really strong, especially when he has to exhibit so much. Uh, obviously, the psychosis of killing people in the name of peace, but also the family trauma that's introduced, everything that happened with his brother, and then the absolute train wreck that is his relationship with his father. Here we have Robert Patrick as Augie, a.k.a. the White Dragon, who, another thing that I like, they did not try to give this guy a complicated side. Peacemaker is a very complicated character. Augie's a very simple character. He's a piece of shit. Your dad is not a good man. Not to the world and especially not to you. He is one of the worst people you can possibly imagine, and yet we see Peacemaker trying to contort himself and contort his thinking to not acknowledge that fact. Robert Patrick, I think, did a great job, and a lot of times as an actor, I think it can be risky to take a part like this because you are just this, this loathsome, horrible person, and yet he plays that role so well, you understand the effect that he's had on his son. This is a heightened version of dynamics that are actually very real in this world. This relationship, dysfunctional parental relationships, bad influences, being told from a young age that you're worthless or that you can't do this or that the music you're listening to is wrong or that you're weak, whatever it is, people actually go through this and we're seeing it on a much heightened level in this show. But something else that I'm really glad they're doing is it looks like dealing with the long-term trauma of this. I was a little disappointed at first with how they dispatched the character because I thought it was sort of a, a solution that was far too quick and easy. I love that Robert Patrick appears to be coming back to this show for season two, and it's going to deal with the fact that the corporeal presence of a person, just because they leave, that doesn't stop the trauma that they inflicted on you. I'm in your head. I'm the reason you kill and the reason you can't sleep at night. We have this sort of Jessica Jones type situation where he's going to be fighting against the worst instincts and the worst things that his father left him with. And I'm looking forward to that advancement of the relationship. The ensemble around John Cena, I think, is also a big part of why this show works so well. And I like that Peacemaker has his own specific relationship with just about every single person individually. I think my favorite of the dynamics would be the Peacemaker Economist relationship because their back and forth was consistently funny. Optimus Prime, Shipwreck, Cobra Commander, the fing from Riverdale. All right, next time I fing have to frame somebody, it'll be one of all those thousands of people you just mentioned. But even that ended up having a lot of heart injected into it when we understand the reasons around Economist and why he's so insecure. He never had a girlfriend, so we thought dyeing his beard might help. But he was also lazy and busy with his job. Mostly though, he never thought anybody noticed. I do have to confess that Steve Agee, who plays Economist, is somebody who I know back from my Channel 101 days in Los Angeles. I met him back in 2005, and he has always been just a wonderfully delightful, warm, nice person. From the very beginning, when he had no reason to even acknowledge who I was, he was always friendly, always one of the first people in the room to come say hello, and it's been really satisfying for me to see him pop up in a lot of James Gunn's projects over the years, and I'm just so happy to see him playing this character to see him have such a big role and playing a role that seems to have really caught on with people because Steve has always been just a really great person and somebody that you want to see having this kind of success the children's books it's Baron Stain Bears not Baron Steen Bears <laughs> Dude, I grew up on those books. It's Berenstein Bears. Mm, absolutely not. Adebayo is somebody that I also enjoyed watching throughout the season, and I think that was a great way to have a very personal story. We have this conflict between her and her mother, the fact that she's not really comfortable with anything that Amanda Waller wants her to do, but she needs the job. She obviously wants to please her parent, but then the decision she makes toward the end to out Amanda Waller, to out Task Force X, this has lasting effects on the DCEU, so it's not like this show is going to be completely siloed and not have any effect on any other project. Daniel Brooks, I think, did a really good job with this character because in many ways, she's the eyes of the audience. She's the most grounded person in this ensemble coming in from outside. And I think it was a clever way to bring her in. She's inside in that she knows Amanda Waller and she kind of knows what this task force is all about. But at the same time, a Waller is not above nepotism and bringing her daughter into this team, we are allowed our own conduit into what they do. And really, Adebayo is the person that kind of is able to say, what the hell are you doing? You people are all nuts. Or maybe you just gave us a chance to make our own choices instead of our bug overlords. 
The Peacemaker Vigilante friendship is also really great to see. It's one of the like most pure and also like one of the worst friendships in the world. These are two deeply, deeply sick and troubled people who just happen to have found each other. I think maybe it was the best love story of the season. I think it might be a really fun evolution of the show if the two of them were to realize maybe that they're made for each other. I mean, Vigilante getting himself thrown in jail in order to go after Peacemaker's father is a pretty big sign of devotion. Okay, so that's my turn. Which one of you dumb sister and tiki torch carrying sloth from the Goonies looking pieces of shit wants to go next? I know they're setting up the more conventional hardcore peacemaker romance for season two, but I would actually kind of like to see a peacemaker vigilante coupling, if only to see that the results of them coming together would be a complete implosion in their dynamic, a realization that, hey, they're great at fighting crime together, they're great at shooting stuff in the woods together, but anything else, probably not a good idea. Also, Freddie Stroma did a great job with this character, and it would be a great job regardless, but the fact that he came in very late in production, had to step in and replace somebody and still crush this and played it. I, I really can't imagine anyone else doing the character of Vigilante. He was a standout and a cast full of standouts. You don't think it's interesting that a praying mantis thing has a favorite color and it might unexpectedly be teal. That is mildly interesting. And honestly, there wasn't a performance in the entire cast that I didn't enjoy. Jennifer Holland's Harcourt was, I think, maybe the least developed character overall, and I hope that she gets more of the spotlight in the next season. Annie Chang and Lachlan Monroe turned what could have been two thankless roles as the cops into memorable supporting turns. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Chikwudi Iwuji's Mern was so much fun to watch, even before the butterfly reveal. I loved his oddball energy with that little bit of menace always simmering underneath the surface. Do you all want to be here till tomorrow? Do you have cable? So I don't want to stay here overnight if there's no cable. Fargo's on tonight. It was a rhetorical question. Even the smaller roles, I think, were written and performed really well. You had Christopher Heyerdahl's Casper Locke and that really chilling sociopath energy. Nut Lou as Judo Master was always a fun face to see pop up. If his love for Flaming Hot Cheetos was product placement, then it was great product placement. Mel Tuck only had a couple of scenes as Augie's neighbor, but they were memorable scenes. That man doesn't kill people. Because he's a pussy. He's a dark creature of the night. He's a jackass. And even Allison Araya and Lynn Lenny Jacobson as the perpetually unhappy couple Evan and Amber were memorable. Oh, you, Amber! Oh, eat me, Evan! And then, of course, you have Eagly, one of the most lovable pets on screen ever. And I love that his big moment in the finale, he completely failed because, of course, he's not a genius. He's kind of a big, dumb eagle, but he's loyal, and he loves Peacemaker, and Peacemaker loves him, and that's really what you want. This was obviously a passion project for James Gunn, so it's no surprise that it was full of all the things that he likes to put in his movies. We had blood, we had creatures, we had lots of stuff splattering around. A dude killed a gorilla with a chainsaw. I think the butterflies were a really good idea for a villain, although they were kind of similar to Starro in the Suicide Squad, the idea of flying in and going into people's faces in order to take them over and disable them. The cow was legitimately disturbing. Some weird cross between a spider and a brain and a baby. This show was actually able to do what I think Gunn was, was so successful with when it comes to Guardians of the Galaxy, which is to marry these weird, out there sci-fi concepts with a cast of likable characters who are well-drawn, uh, emotionally honest. That makes for good drama. That makes for a good show. And I think that the singularity of vision that James Gunn brings, the fact that he was on the writing side behind every single screenplay is what makes this show so consistent. And that's something that a lot of shows struggle with is consistency from episode to episode. Now, this is a spoiler for the finale because there is one cameo that I really enjoyed. So skip ahead. You can check the timestamps below if you don't want to hear this. But the idea of the greater universe. Maybe you could call in the Justice League. No, I'm not kidding. Do we have time to wait for backup? No, they're teleporting the creature out of here. The real cherry on top of that is after the situation when they're walking out, you see the Justice League, not only in silhouette, which I thought was funny if he just was insulting them as silhouettes and then they disappear. But the fact that you bring in Jason Momoa and you bring in Ezra Miller, you let Jason Momoa drop two F-bombs in the course of about 30 seconds. I'm so f***ing sick of that rumor. It's not a rumor. 
Yeah, Barry. I like that Warner Brothers isn't getting precious about their characters and saying like, well, I mean, we can't have Aquaman in this movie because he's in a PG-13 movie and we can't have him come swear in this movie because it's not consistent with the other ones. I think not being overly concerned with the overall universe is what helps set this show apart. And it's kind of the problem that I've had with the Disney Plus shows, The Book of Boba Fett in particular, which is the idea that each of them is seen as this interlocking cog or gear into a bigger machine. And so it has to throw exactly with this other one and so you got to put this in and got to put this in and, and these characters and you have to cross over this character with that one and after a while they all have this kind of samey feel because they don't really have the permission to take these big leaps or take these big jumps or if they do you have to rein it back in to the overall story here with peacemaker i doubt that any of this is going to have any relevance to the overall story other than perhaps this exposure of task force x and so you have the license to do things like bring in in the Justice League to quip a little bit and not have to worry about, well, we have to explain where Aquaman was because in this movie, but this show isn't worried about that. And I honestly think that should be the role of these superhero TV shows. Obviously, they are part of a bigger universe and they should be. But at the same time, you have to give them permission to tell their own stories, not an interlocking puzzle piece with another story. Let them tell their arcs, let them go off and have their own adventures. And that can inform those characters when they show up in the movies. The movies should be big picture. The TV shows should be their own adventures that are much more character focused, much more specific. Maybe people disagree with me on this, but that's the kind of shows that I was looking forward to when this huge streaming expansion happened and everybody's getting their own show. It's the kind of show that we've kind of gotten a little bit with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I would say WandaVision was the closest that we've gotten, but other than WandaVision, I'd say that I enjoyed Peacemaker uh, more than all of the other uh, Marvel TV shows. And even when we talk about WandaVision, I think that Peacemaker is more consistent than that show was. They're pretty level for me as far as enjoyment, but I think that Peacemaker narratively has the most consistency out of all of them. You you have a show here which can have a big cosmic threat like a cow that gives off nectar to feed a race of butterflies but you can also take time to have two characters argue about a powerpoint presentation well you can do it next time it's not like i enjoy doing this yeah you do both of these things exist because you're constructing your own universe where you set the rules not somebody else. I'd actually love to see James Gunn become like the czar of the DC TV universe in the way that Jon Favreau has sort of become the czar of the Star Wars TV universe because I think he's a great person to shepherd each of these individual projects as, hey, you execute your vision. You do what you want to do here. Yes, we know where you're coming from and we're going to have to kind of string those narrative threads together, but go tell your own story. Go nuts, go crazy, and then bring it back and we'll do the movies uh, as part of, you know, another deal. I think this could be what separates these DC TV shows from the Marvel TV shows, and I hope that the future DC shows do this, because I really, really like this direction. If they're going to do more DC shows, I hope they're in the vein of Peacemaker, where we're knowing these characters, and we're going to see these characters in future films, but we are having our own standalone narratives, and really psychologically deep narratives. Narratives that don't make us like these characters or try to convince us why these characters are great, but show us who these people are, and let us make our own judgments. James Gunn got permission to make Peacemaker different, and I think that's why it succeeded. So I was really, really, really honestly surprised by Peacemaker. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about it. I ended up really liking season one. I'm glad it got picked up for a season two. I hope that, you know, you're going to string along some of these narrative threads, but I'm looking forward to all of the wacky new stuff that we're going to bring in in a second season of this show. And it really should be a template for people, and the template being don't follow a template as they're planning all of these spinoff projects when everything gets its own TV show. So those are my thoughts on Peacemaker. What did you think? Did you like the show? Were you hoping that it would tie in a little bit more to the DC universe? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. You can check me out not only here on YouTube, but also on my audio channel. I drop audio exclusive reviews and a lot of other great stuff there, as well as everything I do here on YouTube. And you can check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash Dan Merle. Right here on YouTube, I just put out a review of the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. I will also have a review out soon of the Netflix show All of Us Are dead a great zombie show from korea that i enjoyed so keep an eye out for that thank you so much for watching stay safe out there and i'll see you next time bye